Wish team. Wish team, wish team. Wish team, 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 bloody wish team, bloody wish team, wish team. Hammers. Hi gang, welcome to Mike on Monday, the West Ham show made by a bloke called Mike that comes out on a Monday. Uh, let's see what's been happening at West Ham this week, shall we? This way, let's go. Well, thanks so much for joining us this week. It's great to have you viewing. Um, let's get a look at what happened at West Ham then. Um, on Monday, uh, West Ham suspended youth coach Mark Phillips for attending the Democratic Lads Alliance March on over the weekend. Now, okay, let's get a couple of things clear here. One, they're not lads. They're a bunch of old football hooligans who get together and march about stuff which I personally couldn't disagree with more. Uh, being the uh, West Ham token lefty, I'm never going to agree with uh, that sort of group of people's ideas. However, Mark Phillips just attended the march. He wasn't arrested, he didn't cause any trouble, he wasn't been accused of beating people up. Not that I think anyone was beating anyone up that day. There was a protest, there was a counter protest, it got a little bit of argy bargy, but Mark Phillips hasn't been accused of doing that or saying racist stuff or doing anything like that. So it did seem a little bit odd that he was suspended for attending a march. Now, I must have skipped skip. I completely disagree with everything the Lads Alliance, as I say, old men, lads, eh, um, um, would, would, would be marching for. But I do uh, think that everyone's got the right to march and protest about what they believe in. Uh, I personally have attended some, um, a great deal of men, you probably imagine, I've uh, protested and gone on marches loads in my time. Uh, I remember, for example, attending a march against racism many, many years ago, which was a march from Hyde Park uh, to um, Victoria Park in Hackney, uh, where there was a Rock Against Racism uh, show on that day as well. That's back in the days of Rock Against Racism, I was a young guy, but that's a long march, Hyde Park to Victoria Park. I remember on the way going, uh, have I really got to march against racism? Couldn't I get a cab against racism? Uh, because that's a long way. I think it's a black cab. It's a black cab. Surely I can get a black cab against racism. I've also attended things like the uh, legalised cannabis march a few years ago. Um, though that was more of a sit-down protest, if I remember correctly, eventually. But, you know, I, 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 I really believe in my own right to attend marches and protest in my own way. Uh, this weekend, just gone, there was a big, we want a second referendum on Brexit march. Um, it, would he have been suspended for attending that? I, I just think it's a little bit rough that he was, he's been suspended for attending march if there was no other... Uh, outcome from it, like he hasn't been arrested and blah blah blah. So um, it's a bit odd. I don't know what you think. Do you agree with me? Leave comments below. I know they're a bit of a nasty group. I get that. But he hasn't done anything nasty, has he, other than go on a march? Um, and that's my opinion. They're a nasty group. And many of you might agree with them. That's fine. We're all different people believing different things. Um, but anyway, that's how the week started. Yet more controversy. Uh, and later in the week, there was a, a footage of Marco on now to reach limping. Uh, in a training session which made many people believe that he wouldn't be around to play the game against Spurs at the weekend. Um, I've got a feeling that's just how he, he likes to walk. Um, he, I think he might be doing the whole pretend he's black thing going on and uh, he's got that slight arrogant attitude or maybe he was getting an injury, I don't know. We know he's got this sore knee uh, and he's playing through pain and what well played to Marco for doing that and um, yeah, uh, Saturday match day came around. Now, one, great to have us playing Spurs at three o'clock on a Saturday. It's a rarity. Uh, it's something I didn't think we'd see in this TV age for a long, long time. Um, so great to have a three o'clock kickoff and great to everyone on the boat. Hi to everyone I was chatting to. Got quite drunk, had a really good night out with my man Tone, if you're watching this Tone. And, um, and yeah, so it was great to come down for the game. Um, the only downside was the result. Um, I thought we'd do them, I really did. And talking to people on the boats pre-game, a lot of people agreed with me and thought we'd beat them. Uh, we didn't, 
um, it went a bit pear-shaped. Let's have a look um, at why it went pear-shaped. Uh, with Mike at the Tactic Centre, Mike, why did we lose the Spurs? Uh, over to you, mate. Make some sense of it for us, please. Thanks, Mike. On Saturday, West Ham United took on Tottenham Hotspur at the London Stadium. Let's see what happened in that game, tactically speaking. We lost. Yarmolenko got injured. The game finished. West Ham United nil. Tottenham won. Thanks, Mike. Cutting edge analysis, as always, from Mike at the High Tech Tactics Centre here on Mike on Monday. Um, for me, on, on Saturday, there was a, a lot of pluses and minuses, but mostly minuses. Um, awful to see um, Yarmolenko being stretched off. Uh, let's hope that's not a big, big injury, but I strongly suspect it is. Um, someone who goes down like that in obvious agony without actually being tackled or kicked by someone is generally deep, deep trouble. Um, we have clearly, clearly got an issue at left back. Uh, I didn't think Creswell played particularly well and um, Masawaka hasn't really convinced this season either, has he? And uh, so, so I don't really know what we're going to do about that other than buy another left back in January? Yay, let's hope so. And um, plus sides, Grady Dean Garner looked really, really good when he came on and four marks to, uh, to, to, to Pellegrini for putting on the lad to play a, a full half game and uh, against bitter rivals, I thought he played really well. Diamonds on work, hard, shows pace, but most of all what I like about him is when he's running with the ball, his head's up. He's looking for the pass all the time. You compare that to Antonio, who um, uh, came on for a, a big chunk of the second half as well, who tends to run from A to B, then look up and see where he's going to pass or who can pass to. Um, Grady Diangana runs from A to B with his head up, always looking for the pass, so he can release the ball at the right time, uh, as opposed to when he thinks he needs to release it, if you know what I mean. Uh, but Antonio, as I say, came on. And what's interesting as well is Anderson, had a shocker, didn't he? He was really poor. Uh, uh, he's very lightweight, tends to fall over in a, in a puddle if anyone looks at him in a funny way. And um, I'm, I'm just really concerned, really, because he never once got past their fullback, uh, Trippi, I think it was, down that side. Uh, uh, and then Antonio came on and roasted him about three times in 10 minutes. Uh, didn't do anything when he got to the byline, but he did go powering past him. So. That was something that can be done, you know, and uh, Anderson didn't do it once. Uh, and his corner taking and free kicks were terrible. Um, something needs to happen with him. Uh, I, I'm not sure that it's the poor support from fullback behind him, but he has had some good games for us, but recently he's not um, as well. And he's, he played well against Man U, he played really well against Everton, I thought, but. He can go missing for large chunks of game, and against Spurs, you cannot do that. We can't afford to be playing with 10 men, essentially, um, which is what, what's happening when he's gone missing. So, um, that needs to be looked at. Uh, anyway, um, let's have a look from afar by asking Mikhail, all the way over in Moscow, what he thought of the game. Always get some intelligent response and some great in-depth analysis of the game from Mikhail. So, can you hear us in Moscow, Mikhail? Do come in. Greetings from Moscow. Yes, and so. Your hammers of West and Ham. Yes, and so. They lost to the hotshots of tottering rubbishness. And so, you lost. What do we do? In Moscow, simple. First, you send your ham of West to Siberian Gulag. Teach them lesson for losing game. Second, you have your tottering of hot shots executed by state. Just shoot them. That teach them lesson too. Finally, you just bribe. Yes, and so you bribe, bribe the league to give you the three points. This way you win game. 
tottering of hotshots bother you no more and Ham of West players are taught valuable lesson. Yes, and so all problems solved for Hammers and West Ham fans. Yes, and so here in Moscow it is nearly hot. Minus 10 only. Yes, and so greetings from Moscow. Thanks, Mikhail. It says it already, doesn't it? Now, on to your questions. Now, thank you once again, everyone, uh, for all those people who have asked questions. You can ask a question of me as well uh, by um, leaving comments below in the comment section. You can tweet me at WHUMike and you can follow me there as well. Uh, or find me on Facebook under my actual name, Mike Manera. So um, let's have a look at your questions then for this week. <laughs> So here we go. Once again, thanks everyone who's asked a question. I'll try and get through a few here. Uh, James Gunn, uh, thanks for this mate. He asks, and it's typical of the kind of in-depth, cutting, um, knowledgeable questions we get here on Mike on Monday. Uh, James Gunn asks, if Mark Noble was a biscuit, which one would he be? Now, that's obviously uh, that's the kind of searing question we like. Uh, he, he could be many biscuits, couldn't he, really? He could be a bourbon, he could be a hobnob, he could be a, a chocolate digestive. But I'm going to go with rich tea. Um, I'll tell you why. They, they, they are a kind of slightly boring but staple dunking biscuit. And I feel Noble's a dunking kind of player. He's always there, he's always reliable, and he blends in well with other other players, i.e. with tea or coffee. You can see where I'm coming from. Uh, and uh, I don't personally don't eat bridge tea, but uh, I admire their existence. Um, there you go. I also got into an, uh, an argument once online over rich tea. I was reading an article about China uh, in the um, in the Guardian, and you know you get a lot of spiteful comments after it was online copy of the Guardian, of course, because I'm I'm techie savvy, and uh, all these people were posting these things about um, China, and someone said uh, China is no longer a country where people get rich or uh, off tea, and somebody else posted rich tea. That's my favourite biscuit. And someone else underneath commented, Rich tea, that's that's like one of the most boring biscuits on earth, you total retard. People are very mean online. And someone else posted underneath that saying, come on people, we should be getting more back into this conversations really about um, really about getting really looking at China as a modern country right now. Um, Someone else posted underneath that, uh, what about Tiananmen Square? And then someone else posted uh, underneath that, I've never had a Tiananmen Square, are they good for dunking? And then someone else posted under that saying, dunking was one of the greatest leaders China ever had. And someone else posted underneath that guy saying, um, that's ridiculous, we're supposed to be talking about modern China, and it went on and on and on. Uh, and, uh, but it entertained me anyway. Um, Anyway, uh, thanks for that, uh, James Gunn. Next is uh, Jake Mark. This is a statement rather than a question. Jake went and said, if we fail to beat Spurs, I will have a tattoo of Mike's face put onto my ass." We're waiting, Jake. I'm looking forward to seeing the uh, pictures of that on, uh, on the internet and maybe do a video for it on YouTube. You getting my face tattooed on your ass. Looking forward to it, mate. And um, finally for today, we've got Hammer 67. I don't know what happened to the numbers 1 to 66, and uh, or if there are more than 67 hammers. But Hammer 67 very kindly asked, uh, do I think we will be less than next week? Now, that really is open to debate this one, because I do think Leicester are there for the taking. Uh, I also think that um, that we're going to be making a lot of changes. We haven't got Yarmolenko now. I don't know what's I'd like to see Anderson maybe play over on the right side and have a right footed player on the right wing and see what he does with a decent fullback. Because Zabaleta has been in exceptional form for us this season. Looks like a player rejuvenated. And he, um, and I'd like to see what Anderson could do with that fullback behind him and maybe play Antonio on the left. Uh, I'd also really like to see Obian come, come back. Now, there's a lot of people going on about how great Snodgrass is. I'm not a fan. I just think 
He works hard, I get that, but his in, actual impact with the ball is really quite slight. I'm also amazed he wasn't taking more set pieces because I would have thought he's the man, but never mind. And um, I didn't really like him in central midfield. I think we looked much better as a 4 3 3 with Obiang playing, and I felt that we kind of matched Spurs with a 4 2 3 1. Because even though Snodgrass was supposed to be in central midfield, he was playing further up the pitch. Which is a natural inclination, I kind of get that. Um, then I, as if Obiang's back, and if we can firm up what we're doing, I'd, I'd also like to see Chikorito play. And I, I don't know how we'd fit him in, but he looked quite lively when he came on. And um, I'd like to see him playing a bit more. Um, I'm not, I wouldn't want to put Alnautovic on the left though because he would disappear from the game. I quite like him essentially. I think he, again, played pretty well. I just, just didn't get the rub of the green. Um, we've lost two games, one nil in a row. In both of those games, I felt we weren't played off the park in any way, shape or form. And we were quite unlucky or bad finishing, let us down. Um, I'd like to see us do better at Leicester, let's put it that way. Um, I'll be at the game, looking forward to it going down with John. Um, and um, I'm really looking forward to going to that. If you see me at the game, do say hello. I'm quite a friendly chap. You'll find me, yay. Uh, and um, I, I'm hoping for a win. Um, so that's it for this week's Mike on Monday. If you've got any questions, leave comments below at WHU Mike. You can tweet me out. Uh, do follow me on Twitter. Uh, I'll be back next Monday for another mic on Monday and um, I'm going to do an extra show next week as well. I'm going to keep you in suspenders by not quite telling you yet what it's about but I will do next Monday and um, so I'm looking forward to that and um, until then guys come on you irons. Oh don't forget to subscribe uh, to both Hammers Chat channels and um, like this, give it the thumbs up if you enjoyed it. You can just share the video with your friends and put it on Facebook and whatever you want to do and all that stuff, you've got the idea. Anyway, till next week, come on you irons, have a great week gang.